It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa, time for Off the Press. We will take you through the pages of the National Dailies. And also we have a guest who will be making sense of some of the big stories. Ezekiel Yaitok, it's good to have you join us this morning. Yeah, good morning. Nice All right, Merry Christmas. Oh, uh, thank you and everybody on Plus TV Africa. Okay, Let, let's take a look at the leadership newspaper this morning and uh, we will be looking at uh, the big stories on the leadership newspaper. The banner caption says, retirees grown a state-owned bi state owes billions in pension arrears. Governors dancing on pensions grave. Kaduna Plateau, Lagos, Quara, Anambra, Oyo, Niger up to date in payment. Federal government releases 16.67 billion naira for accrued 2021 pensions. And talking about the 2022 budget, federal government must focus on power, agriculture to grow economy. Uh, this is what Espat's quoted to say. And Garabashewu recovers from COVID-19. Super Eagle gets new coach. Uh, you also find bandits kill district head two sons of, in Zamfara. President Mohamed Buhari demands progress report on Solid Minerals Fund, assures manufacturers of access to forex. And uh, abductors of player two monarch demand 500 million naira ransom, more tributes for Desmond Tutu at Memorial Service. And that's the much we can take on the leadership. To the Punch newspapers now, oil ownership, ACF backs Obasanjo, Pandef, uh, and uh, others uh, fume, say, constitution fraudulent. Amend constitution if you are not pleased with Obasanjo's argument, if C ACF tells Clark and Pandev. A constitution flawed imposed by military, ex-president mischievous, says Pan Niger Delta Forum. We can also find here pains prolonged as judges' promotion keeps Nigerians in prison, mocks justice system. Federal government borrows 13.6 trillion naira via bonds in six months amid rising deficit financing. And uh, also, MAN visits Buhari, laments serial challenges, gets Forex pledge. We can also find on the punch this morning. Uh, patrol van crushes ASP to death in Nikiti. Command blames mechanical fault. Power drunk SFU policeman, manhandle punch man, sees phone and ID card. Ikiti cancels job exams. Fire me orders return of form fees. Um, also this morning, order from above. Family of admission seeker killed by Oshun DSS operative demands corpse. Ogun Assembly adjusts 182 agencies, votes um, and uh, passes 350 billion naira budget. Those are the big stories on the Punch newspapers this morning. We'll take a quick look at the Daily Independent newspaper. Agric expert foresees increased hunger in 2022. Now, that's the board caption on the Daily Independent. Nigeria working to get vaccines with long expiration dates. NAFDAQ is quoted on that. You also have federal government releases 16.6 billion naira accrued pension for 2021 MDA retirees. Will address forex shortage? Federal government assures manufacturers and says strong rail sector will create more jobs and wealth. Buhari asks for progress report on Solid Minerals Development Fund. And uh, you also have the NFF names Jose Pesirio, new head coach of Super Eagles. How telecom sector helps strengthen economy in 2021. And bandits kill district head sons. Three orders in Zamfara community. Uh, this is some of the headlines on the Daily Independent. All right, and uh, good morning once again to Ezekiel Yaitok. Thanks for joining us. And Merry Christmas. Same to you. Let's kick off with, you know, one of the stories or the major story on the punch this morning, and that is with regards who really owns Nigeria's oil. It says ACF backs Obasanjo, Pandef, and INC uh, fume. Um, say constitution is fraudulent. Of course, I'm sure you know the backstory to this. Uh, Edwin Clark, you know, accusing former President Lushaga Obasanjo of hatred for the Niger Delta region and whatnot. And of course, uh, back and forth concerning what the constitution, constitution really says concerning who owns uh, the oil in the Niger Delta. Okay. Um, 
we live in a country, and I said last week, where we don't seem to understand what nationhood. Nationhood means that you set a template where all the federating nationalities come together on an understanding of equity, of justice, and relate to politics. What that means is that the national template favors all and is not biased against any. It is within that sort of context that you have what you call a egalitarian society. That makes for peace and progress. Now let's come to oil. If we happen to have oil as the only object in the country, and it is, let me use the word resident in a particular locality, there are two concentrations that you have. One concentration is that this commodity is national in the second concentration is that this commodity is resident in a particular community. Now, the community that the product is resident in has certain benefits and has certain challenges. In that of the oil, it is likely that the oil companies will be resident within that locality, meaning that they will be developed in that locality. It also means that the people within that locality, it will be easier to employ them for certain types of jobs because they work from their houses, so it's cheaper for them and it's easier for them. On the other hand, depending on the um, products in question, it could have a capable devastating effect on the environment, on the economy of the people, on the culture of the people. When you put all this together, then you now ask, how do we compensate the people that are having adverse effects? It, it was within that context that there was this concept of 13% derivation. They look at the degradation of the environment. They look at the pollution of the environment. They look at the livestock who, who are predominantly fish that are being stored. They look at the health of the people. I am speaking for the balcony of my house in Uyo, which is so far from the kitchen. And yet, if they are dirty or dirty and walk outside on my balcony of the you discover that your, the soles of your feet are black. This is Uyo. Not to talk of a place like Port Harcourt. If you have a white car and you pack it outside the white, you come back and it looks black and you wonder what's wrong. This is what the people are in hell. Some with, I'm very strange in Abuja as well. When I'm in Abuja, I can suffer that. So we need to contextualize the issue of ownership and look at the responsibility. Now put that aside. Let's take another commodity. There's gold and all the solid minerals. And you ask yourself, why is it that there is a certain level of discrimination in the exploitation of us. Why don't we put in as much as to exploit our mineral office, which is the main thing of several global economies? Why is it that it's only oil that we depend on? How about agriculture? How about the vast land all over this country, particularly in the northern part of the country? So there's a management of our resources that makes a certain group of people to feel that, look, this is ours, it's exploited, and the other people are also exploiting the other. It is within this that 
we now ask ourselves, how can we evolve a template that is free and fair to all? I think that is my okay. main take on this. The uh, issue of who owns who does not own. The constitution is very clear, it's a national asset. And then your constitution also says that the minerals are national assets. Then we see a state government exploiting the minerals and taking it to central bank to keep for them or to buy the something. And you're like, are we having two different laws for the same country? Let's operate on equity. And I will be the first to say, gentlemen of the United Delta, let us allow the other to keep federal assets because the gold is also a federal asset. So All right. Um, Ezekiel, yeah, I took. Let's also take a yes. look at the Daily Independent newspaper. Yes. And uh, the concern here is about the fact that agri experts foresee increased hunger in 2022. Now, this is yes. despite the rise revolution that's ongoing uh, by this administration. I, I don't think this is what it's fine. We sit here on a daily basis and see these terrorists stop the farmers from We sit here and we see the first men take their cattle to farmland for those things to be eaten by their cattle. We stay here and we discover that farmers cannot go to farm except they pay. Do we need at least experts to tell us that without qualification, there is going to be static. And when there is static, the prices will rise. And in a country that has the poorest concentration of people in the world, is it rocket science for you to know that the poor will not have capacity to afford? And if the poor cannot afford, the inevitable consumption is hunger. Ah, I don't see what is so profit uh, that we need average experts to tell us this. I just think that we have government who really don't understand the existence of government. That governance is a management of the resources of the people. I'm so happy that one of the things that we have seen is that the super egos have just engage a technical advisor or what are the coach or what are the presentation they're giving. They go through a lot of processes to give us somebody they believe is competent, has capacity, capability, has the requisite and the requisite knowledge and understanding of the game. We went through all that. And yet we don't put any template for the recruitment of the head of the management team of the Nigerian nation. It's sad. And I think the time has come when we, that call ourselves enlightened people, should wake up and see politics as the recruiting agency for the management team of the Nigeria project. And if that be the case, it cannot be left with the hands of talk and people that supposedly have money. Governance must be set Governance must be professional. Governance must be focused. Once all this comes into play, then we'll be able to understand what will come out of an effect that we are feeling today. And wisdom demands that we need to take it and meet in the court before we get there. All right. Mr. So talk um, back to the punch newspapers. Uh, one of the stories there says, pains prolonged as judges' a promotion keeps Nigerians in prison and uh, mocks justice system. Uh, as I talk, you know, our you know, judicial system has had challenges for a long time, the criminal justice system in general, um, and it's one of the, you know, the reasons a lot of people have lost faith in it. Um, but you know, once in a while, some of the reasons you know, that are given for prolonged justice uh, for, of course, Nigerians being held in prison, um, in, in police custody, awaiting trial for five, ten years, are really, really sickening. Um, and this one now is talking about promotion of judges as a reason uh, for prolonged 
um, 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 you know, um, well, a prolonged judicial uh, process. Um, is, is this fair enough? Or is this, you know, something to hear in a sane society? You see, there, there, I didn't quite see, um, but I think I can speak because my network is, like I said, challenging. But let me, let me talk about our justice system. The very first thing is this. How is our justice system operated? You are accused. And the next thing is that the police probably swooping on you. A lot of times, let me say this, which we know, but it might sound uncharitable to the very good um, people that we have in the street. It seems that the issue of bail, raising money to run the station, makes it such that when you go, you just get everybody that is around. And a lot of times, it is those that do not have the capacity to meet what I would call bail conditions in current cases, which to me is like they don't have money to pay and get it. So that inadvertently, because a crime was supposedly reported, the perpetrators of the crime, more often than not, have the money to pay and get the pay. So at the end of the day, it is the innocent that will remain in custody. And when these people are eventually charged to court, the evidence is so weak that prosecution becomes almost impossible. But if we had done investigation, thorough investigation, and arrived at conviction parameters, and then we sweep it on the person, we will be able to charge it almost immediately to court, and with the evidence on ground, we'll be able to get justice. So because this process is turned on its head, what we have is a lot of people awaiting trial. Why are they awaiting trial? Why are the cases not coming up? Why are the, the, the investigations not getting churned out? I think we need to have a very, very fundamental mindset shift. Let the police be properly funded so that they do not have to export the public to run their station. One of the things that was said either on your station or one of the stations was how a DPO has to run a station with, I think, 14 or 28,000. One, one, only one ridiculous abduct and stuff like that. So they have to find a way of making money. So I think this is all about the enterprise of, 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 of justice, of the justice system. It has been commercialized. So you cannot have justice on an object that has been commercialized. It's not possible. All right. Uh, sadly, of course, we would have to wrap up the conversation here. Uh, Zikoi, I talk always interesting hearing your perspective yeah. on these stories. And we wish you a very beautiful uh, day ahead. And, of course, compliments of the season once again. Very, very same to you. Thanks. And I wish you and everybody in God's city of Africa an amazing 2022. Absolutely. Stay so with us. We'll be sharing with you what happened on this day in history many, many years ago. And then right after that, our first major conversation on The Breakfast this morning kicks off. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back. Stay with us.